Hi folks, I just want to say quickly before I start, thank you very much for the feedback and comments on the last few videos. It means a lot. I'm very fortunate to have met and continue to meet such kind people through this YouTube channel and I'm very grateful. My upload schedule is all over the place. I didn't upload for months last year and yet my core little clan seems to stick around and are always kind and encouraging so thank you. I'm trying to get as much done as I can. I have a few other playlists on hold at the moment. Stuff that I'm bursting to get your thoughts on. Lots to do, very little time. But I feel movements in the Delphi case are a huge component in understanding what happened and it's worth the time. If you are watching this video and haven't seen part one, please pause, go watch that and come back. I'll wait, this video will still be here. It's really important because I'm doing this video on the assumption that everybody has seen part one. So please check that out if you haven't seen it and you're listening to this. Just quickly recapping some movements from the last video. I'll show you here a little animation and I'll go over it then bit by bit. This covers Kelsey, Abby, Libby, Derek, FSG and BG. And now I'm adding Betsy into the mix. I'm also zooming back a bit so you can see the crime scene for when Derek is there. That's important because quick preview of my next video. Derek and Richard Allen, according to the prosecution, must have been inches from each other. It's pretty extraordinary when you consider what Richard Allen was supposed to have looked like at this time and also what he had in his pocket as he walked towards Derek. But that's for the next video. This video is all about Betsy. Betsy B, the star witness. This poor woman went for an efficient 20-25 minute walk on a random Monday afternoon and it changes her life forever. Seems like she wanted to avoid people, get a small walk in and take in some nature, get a bit of peace and it brought her the exact opposite for years. Please, if anyone has some sort of urge from watching this video to try and contact Betsy to ask her questions, do not leave her alone. The stress of this must be insane and she is vital for Abby and Libby so that they can get justice, like all witnesses. She already has to deal with weirdos like me from halfway across the world, speculating on her memory recall, wondering if she has glasses and good eyesight, and wondering just in general is something amiss because I don't fully understand why she wasn't taken more seriously. I have seen some crazy witnesses in cases before. From what I can see, Betsy is not that at all. She seems like a nice, decent lady. But since I found out Betsy's sketch was the first sketch done by a long time, I have been asking people about Betsy in private because I feel like she wasn't believed and I want to know why. Betsy also feels she wasn't believed and I'll show you and talk about an example of some of her frustration later. I don't know who she is meant to be a witness for. It's debatable whether she backs up the prosecution or whether she backs up the defence. I'll give you the facts in this video and you can decide. 
I imagine both the prosecution and the defence think that she is a witness for them and poor Betsy will be caught in the middle. So let's have a look, let's go over everything. Going to give you a quick summary of timestamps I have for Betsy and then we'll dig around the details and have a look at what she actually said that she saw and how she reacted to how the information she gave was processed. This is the route that Betsy took to the trail and the way she left. She didn't park at the Freedom Bridge side, she drove around and parked at the mayor's lot. She passed the Harv store, so that's where we get some nice timestamps. So at approx 13.42, she was driving under the old railroad bridge. I said in the last video that this bridge is very important, and the reason is, while Betsy was passing this bridge when she was driving under, she seen four girls on top walking to the west. The girls had walked over Freedom Bridge and were leaving. I'll talk about them in a future video, but that's very important for a number of reasons. One, it aligns with a picture that they took on the trail. They said that they left shortly after taking this photo and that matches pretty much perfectly with Betsy seeing them leave. Another point I think people should consider here is what does this tell us about Betsy's recall? Have you drove under a bridge in the last couple of days? Do you remember if somebody was walking over it? I don't think I would recall that. I definitely wouldn't. I'd be in my own world when I'm driving. But Betsy remembered. Betsy saying she saw the girls and their time-stamped photo indicates that yes, the girls were walking across the bridge at the time that Betsy said she saw them. Let's keep going, she drives around, she passes the old CPS building and then she passes Harv store at 13.46 and she parks up at 13.47 and begins her walk. At 13.48, Betsy was around the intersection, she went down to 501 for a walk. At about 13.53, she saw someone standing on platform 1, the same platform that Richard Allen said he stood on and she turned around and walked back towards the intersection. Halfway down, around 13.55, she passes Abby and Libby. At around 13.58, she is back at the intersection area. Now, I need to take a moment here again. We don't know for sure what way Betsy went next. I'm going to put her down to 505 and back. I'll give you my reasons. I have thought a lot about it, possibly overthought it. But I think Betsy wanted a nice, quiet, efficient walk. The time of the day suggests it's maybe her lunch break from work. A nice 20-25 minute walk in nature can work wonders. She parked at the mayor's lot. If she wanted to go down the Freedom Bridge Trail, she would have just parked at the parking lot that she had to drive past to get there. I think she wanted to be at the back of the trail, away from people, and not see anyone. It also matches up almost perfectly with the timestamps of her car leaving. If she was to walk down the Freedom Bridgeway, she doesn't have time to go all the way down. She'd have to turn back halfway. So for that reason, I'm going to assume she went down the 505 and back. But that could change in the future. It's a little detail, but it is important because between Freedom Bridge and the intersection, there are five benches. There are no benches between the intersection and the high bridge. There's no benches either on the 505. If somebody was, say, sitting on one of those benches, I don't think Betsy would have walked past them. She certainly couldn't have walked past five benches because she doesn't have the time to walk all the way down and back. To me, the location of where Betsy parked and the time involved suggests she went down to 505 but again i could be wrong about that and i will change it in the future if i am going down to 505 betsy would have been at the bottom about 1405 and back again at the intersection about 1412 1413 she walks to the car she leaves and at 1414 she is captured again on her store camera going west leaving at 1415 she passes the old CPS building and sees a car. A quick summary before we get into the details. She's seen four juvenile females walking across the bridge. 
she's captured on video at the Harv store travelling eastbound at 1.46pm towards the mayor's farm entrance. There was no one parked there when Betsy pulled up. She said she's seen a male matching the male in Libby's video. White male, blue jeans, blue jacket. She walked to the bridge, seen this male turn around and on the way back about halfway she passed Abby and Libby. At 2.14pm her car was seen on camera leaving. And when she was leaving she noticed a car parked at the CPS building and it was parked kind of oddly. It was reversed in against the building. So looking at the animation now again and this time I'm going to stop it and give the details on what Betsy actually said. As she was walking to the high bridge, she seen a male standing on platform one. And you can see from this video, Betsy had a real good view. That's the only thing you can really see, platform one. Can't miss it. So who did Betsy see? Was it Richard Allen? Was it someone else? This is the description that Betsy gave four days later. She said it was white man, 20s, brown curly hair and a medium build. When Betsy seen the sketch, she said, 10 out of 10 for accuracy. Here's the famous sketch. Here's the sketch alongside Richard Allen. I'll give you more details about what Betsy said about that sketch in a bit, but let's move on for now. Betsy walks past the girls, she walks back to the intersection, and she finishes her walk. By my calculation, at 14.07, Betsy would have been walking back up to 5.05, and this is when Libby posted a picture of Abby on Snapchat. At 14.13, when Betsy was getting into her car, that is when the audio, Guys Down the Hill, was recorded. So Betsy was leaving as the girls were going down the hill. At 14.15, she passes the CPS building. This is what the CPS building looked like. Betsy told Liggett that it was a 1965 Ford Comet that her father once owned, which I think is very important because when you have a memory tied to nostalgia like that, to me, it kind of signals that that's a strong memory. Ford didn't actually make a Comet, Mercury did. Betsy was wrong about the makers, but she was right about the car. Her dad didn't own a Ford Comet, he owned a Mercury Comet. She said it was not black, and she said the shape had sharp angles. Betsy also did a sketch of the side profile of the car that she seen at CPS. This sketch was used by Richard Allen's defence team in the Franks motion. We haven't seen it, but I think it's fair to assume that this sketch looks nothing like Richard Allen's car. Here is a side-by-side -side of 1965 not black Ford Comets and Richard Allen's car. The one on the bottom right is not Richard Allen's car, that's just a generic 2016 Ford Focus with black wheels. The top right is photographs of Richard Allen's car. So in February, Betsy gave a sketch of the car, she gave a sketch of the suspect and she gave details, but she was back in March. In March, she was interviewed by Kevin Hammond and Tony Liggett. She said that the man on the bridge was slender and youthful looking. She said he was more boyish looking. She said it was a man in his 20s or early 30s. His hair seemed poofy and he had no facial hair that she can remember. So here is a photograph of the sketch alongside photographs of Richard Allen.
Betsy was not believed and Betsy's sketch was not released. Now I fully understand why somebody would look at Betsy's sketch and look at the video of Bridge Guy and say that face doesn't really fit that body. I get it. But we do not have the pixels that Betsy had. You can't do anything to that photograph. You can't zoom in. You can't put filters on it. You can't generate pixels that are not there. Betsy had the pixels. And Betsy said, this is the guy. But she's not believed. And instead, we get a sketch that was done months later. Betsy spoke with Liggett in March 2017. Two years passed by, nothing. And in March 2019, a very frustrated Betsy met with Liggett. And Betsy was annoyed because her sketch was not released to the public. She is recorded as saying sketch one is wrong and that the golf hat is wrong. The following month, on the 22nd of April 2019, sketch two, Betsy's sketch, is released to the public following a press conference. So it's like they didn't believe Betsy for two years and then nothing was happening, they had nothing to lose, they released the sketch. The prosecution now alleges that both these sketches are in fact of Richard Allen. This sketch mightn't be a problem for the prosecution, but I feel the care is Betsy has nostalgia tied to that memory. She's just after finishing a 20 minute walk where she got some fresh air. We know she's fairly on the ball because before her walk she's seen the four girls go over the bridge. And considering Richard Allen drove a black Ford Focus, Betsy couldn't really have given a description that moves further away from that. Not black, sharp angles. However, if that car happened to be in the background of any photographs, that could change things. There are some suggestions that that is the case. I have not seen anything concrete with any timestamps yet. So that's Betsy. I believe that Betsy believes that she has those memories. Whether or not they happened is a different story. I think she sounds like a very credible witness, especially having nostalgia tied to memories, the fact that she's seen the girls going over the bridge, the fact that she was so frustrated after two years and stuck to her guns, saying, no, that is the wrong guy, wrong sketch, mine is right. Very interesting your thoughts, let me know what you think. And in the next video, we look at BG, allegedly Richard Allen, and his movements out of the crime scene and back to his car. Please give this video a thumbs up and a like if you found any value in it. Subscribe, share with a group. Good luck, God bless. I hope everyone has a nice day.